Camera's ready? Um, can we just please make sure that nobody gets in the line of the cameras? Thank you very much. Um, good morning, everyone, and thank you for your patience. Um, I'm going to hand over to Cole, but just a reminder, please, everyone, to ensure that you've got a microphone in your hand before you ask a question. And please ensure that all of your um, mobile phones are either muted or um, on vibrate. Thank you very much. Uh, G'day, Pat. Um, first questions first. Have you had a look at the pitch? Yeah, just had a look. Okay. And what did you make of it? Uh, again, I'm not a great pitch reader, um, but it looked pretty firm. Um, they've only just watered it, so yeah, give it another 24 hours and have, have a look, but it looks like a pretty good wicket. Has it been used before? Yes. I think uh, Pakistan played someone there. So how do you expect it to um, play compared to Calcutta? Um, yeah, hard to know. I think it's been a bit more high scoring here throughout the tournament. Um, yeah, it's been a pretty good wicket, so yeah, hard to say. Uh, Pat, all the best for the final. Uh, people are already building it up as uh, India uh, coming hard at you for the 2003 revenge as well as the uh, WTC final, which you also played as a captain and won it. So, you, and Indians also have the home advantage. You expect the Indians to come really hard at you, especially when uh, they are in a kind of form which Australians were in 2003 and 2007. Yeah, I mean, uh, <clears throat> neither player from both sides were there in 2003, so it feels a long time ago. Um, but we, we know it's going to be a packed house. There's going to be 130,000 fans here supporting India. Um, so it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be awesome. They've been playing really well, undefeated this tournament. Um, but we know at our best we can, um, you know, give them a good, uh, give them a good shake. We've played them quite a lot over the last couple of years with success. So it's all um, building up for a nice final. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, the way he bowled a couple of nights ago up in Kolkata was fantastic. Bowled seven straight, a couple of key wickets, could have easily had a couple of more. So, uh, you know, he, opening partnership between him and Joshy Hazelwood is going to be a big one for us. Um, yeah, we saw what impact they can have on a game when they bowl like they did the other night. So um, they're both big, big game players, played in a few, few ICC finals now, um, so know what it takes. Pat, you guys are no stranger to playing against India. My, as, as the start, start of the tournament, you have said that you have played India more than any team else. So just wanted to know that, is, have you faced any other more dominating Indian side or should I say any other more ruthless Indian side than this one? Um, oh, I think it's hard to say. Um, yeah, they've certainly played really well this World Cup. Um, you know, I think we certainly didn't, I don't think we scored par in that first game, but you know we're one catch away from potentially being in front of that game. So um, there's lots of, you know, we, we won an ODI series here early on in the year. There's lots of moments we can draw on where we've had success against, you know, really good Indian side. Pat, you said you, you know what it takes, and you've played in a lot of big games before, big tests, big one days, big T20s but 100,000 people wanting you to fail is probably something new. How do you, you deal with that and how does the team deal with that? I think you've got to embrace it. Um, you know, the crowd's obviously going to be very one-sided, but um, it's also, in sport, there's nothing more satisfying than hearing a big crowd go silent, and that's the aim for us tomorrow. Um, yeah, you've just got to embrace every, every part of every part of a final. Even, you know, in the lead-up, there's going to be noise and more people and interest and... 
Um, you just can't get overwhelmed. You've got to be up for it. You've got to love it um, and just know, you know, whatever happens, it's fine. Um, but you just want to finish the day with no regrets. Hey, as a fast bowler, what do you think are the challenges uh, you face while bowling on Indian wickets? Uh, I think, you know, similar to a lot of ODI cricket in general, the, the ball obviously swings for a few overs, but after that there's not much swing. Um, so you've got to try and create wickets in other ways. It's not necessarily catches behind the wicket like you might have in Australia. Um, so you've, you've got to be brave with some of the balls you use, slower balls, bounces, you've got to keep it, um, you know, find that balance between mixing it up, um, but also not go chasing too much. So um, I think we've struck that balance pretty well. Um, and, you know, at least over here in India, a lot of the time by the end of the innings, you know, things like cutters um, work perhaps better than it does elsewhere in the world. Uh, hey, Pat, I know you've said that you've stuck to the processes through the whole tournament, but at zip and two and, you know, Sri Lanka none for 100, was there ever a moment where you thought, you know, gee, we might not make it this far? Absolutely, yeah. Um, you know, the proposition at that stage was basically we had to be flawless um, to make it through to the semis, and fortunately we were. Um, but, yeah, absolutely, it's, you know, we, we knew we came up against two very good sides to start off with, but we were off the pace, um, so we knew that we had to change pretty drastically, and, yeah, glad we did. Uh But uh, reaching the final uh, without a dominant show, unlike in the past, uh, how, how does it feel to take on a dominant India? You know, but does the tag of eight finalists, five winners uh, play a role? Uh, yeah, I think with experience and, you know, fortunately some of that experience is playing in World Cups where we've um, been dominant, we've won before. Um, I think... You know, one of the pleasing things is I still don't feel like we've played the complete game, um, maybe against Netherlands, but outside of that, we probably haven't. Um, you know, there's, there's been no huge wins. It, it's, we've had to fight for every win, but we've found a way to win, um, and different players have stood up at different times. So I think taking that confidence, knowing that we don't have to be at our absolute best to challenge any team, we can find a way through it. Uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll draw a lot of confidence. All the boys draw a lot of confidence from that going to tomorrow. Okay, Pat. <clears throat> Has uh, everyone pulled up okay from the other night? And I suppose as an extension, do you expect to go in unchanged? Uh, yeah, everyone's fine. Um, yeah, so no injury issues at all. So we'll, um, you know, coaches and selectors haven't assessed the wicket, so they'll come down tonight, have a look, and we'll pick a team later tonight. Given the discussion in the lead up to the last game around Manus and, and, and Stoin, is there any scope? And I know you decide it later, but it, potentially that if it is more a batting friendly wicket, that you, you could be tempted into going with the extra all rounder? Potentially, yeah. Um, you know, those are things we're way up before every game. Um, <clears throat> we're, we're lucky we've got a 15 man squad who we feel anyone can step in and perform. They're all ready to go. Um, so, yeah, like every other game, we go through a process where. Um, yeah, you know, coaches get together and, and chat through um, <clears throat> what they think or how they think the game's going to go about and then the selectors obviously pick the final 11. <coughs> Which Indian bowler or a batsman challenging for your team tomorrow? Uh, I mean, they're, they're all pretty well-rounded um, in all departments. You know, the one guy that didn't play at the start of the tournament who's done really well is obviously Mohamed Shemi. He's a class bowler to right and left armors, so um, yeah, he's going to be a, a big one, but again, they, these are guys we've played a lot, so um, you know, all, all our batters can draw on moments where they've um, you know, taken on these bowlers and done well. Um, Pat, just the year that you guys have had, like you've been on the road a lot, um, need, I mean, came close to winning a test series in India, sort of, uh, the World Test Championship final, retaining the Ashes, and now, uh, from uh, where you were against Sri Lanka to here, is this like the, the cherry on top? And like, how do you just sum up the year that you have as, had, as captain and as a team? Oh, I mean, it's been a huge year. There, there are four marquee events that if you have one of those in an off-season, it's a big off-season. We've got four of them. Um, so be, being really proud of all those things you mentioned, not only the wins, but um, yeah, the guys have spent 
you know, for some of the guys, have probably spent less than a couple of weeks in their own bed since the end of the Aussie summer. So, um, you know, one thing that stayed consistent has been the morale in the group. The guys have been awesome. Um, they're so up for every game they play. And, uh, yeah, to put ourselves in a position of, of this, it would just top off an incredible year. And, um, yeah, probably a career-defining year that a lot of us will look back on in years to come and, and be pretty proud of. Hi, Pat. Of all the teams, are uh, Australia most e equipped mentally to be immune to a partisan crowd of this size? Uh, I mean, potentially. We play over here in India a lot, so you, the noise is, is not something new. Um, yeah, I think on this scale it's probably bigger than we would have experienced before, but it's, it's not something totally foreign to, to what we've had before. So everyone deals with it slightly differently. You see Davey probably dancing and winning the crowd over. Other guys um, just staying in their own bubble, but um, yeah, it should be good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hello, Pat. Apart from Shami, who else has particularly impressed you in this India side at the tournament so far, having already played them once? Uh, yeah, I think again, you know, they're pretty well rounded. They've got five guys that bowl ten overs pretty much every match. Um, you know, I think their spinners have done well um, through the middle overs, cool deep, um, and Jadeja. So. They're going to be a tough proposition like they always are. Um, but, you know, they've, they've won every game, so uh, they, they've been you know, very impressive. Thank you. Uh, how much uh, importance... Uh, how much importance you give to pitch uh, uh, going into a match and... Uh, what if uh, it, it, it suits to host side? And do you expect, uh, looking into this pitch, uh, do you expect any uh, change in tactics from Indian side? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's hard to say. It's obviously the uh, same for both teams. Um, you know, no doubt playing on your own wicket, um, you know, in your own country has some advantages, um, similar to wickets that you've been playing your whole life. But um, we've played a lot of cricket over here, so... Um, yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see. I, I think, yeah, of all the venues, perhaps this venues, the toss isn't as important as, say, a, a Mumbai Wankhede Stadium or, or other venues. So um, we'll be ready uh, in terms of anything they'll throw at us. Yeah, we'll wait and see, but um, we'll make sure we have some plans. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Weather <coughs> has changed. The difference in temperature after sunset and before that is all seven to eight degrees. Do you think that will impact in any way, kind of, you decide what to do first, to bat first or, or on the wicket also, will it impact the, the, you said the wicket is very firm, but will it impact? Because the difference in temperature is about 7 to 8 degrees. Yeah, I think the biggest um, difference is the dew. Uh, this city and venue seems to have more dew than a lot of the other um, places we play, so uh, perhaps, you know, that's something to think about ahead of tomorrow. Um, again, it might only be the last quarter of the game, but um, yeah, once that settles in and the ball's sliding on, it's, it's quite different to, say, the first 20 overs where it might be swinging. Um, so something to consider. Um, yeah, I think there's, you kind of got to weigh up you know, batting during the day when it might be a bit easier than under lights, but knowing that late in the second innings it could also slide on. Uh, Pat, if I take you ba back... Back in 1999, Steve was mighty Australia, started the World Cup with two losses out of first three. And then he made his famous remark, seven to win to leave the trophy. So this time your team also started with two losses and now you are in the final, one more to go. Do you find any similarity? Um, I mean, I, I keep saying uh, it's a long time ago, so we can't draw too many conclusions from that, but I'm happy to draw a conclusion from that one. So yeah, I like it. <laughs> Hi, Pat. Uh, any special plan for Virat Kohli and Rohit Sharma? Uh, a specific plan, did you say? Well, no. mm -hmm. um, oh, you know, we'll have our couple of thoughts, and they're, they're two class players, so, um, yeah, we'll come up with some plans, but, yeah, n nothing, nothing specific. Um, 
fact, uh, Lord, in the past, a lot of illustrious names have led Australia to titles. Uh, for you personally, what would it mean? Have you thought about what would it mean for you personally to, to probably do that? And is the ODA World Cup still the pinnacle, at least in terms of white ball cricket for you guys? Uh, it'd be huge. Uh, we all, were all kids not too long ago, uh, watching some of those great teams win the 99, 2003, 2007 World Cups. And, um, yeah, that's the opportunity ahead of us tomorrow, which is really exciting. And yeah, to be captain um, would be an absolute privilege to lift the trophy uh, with these great bunch of blokes. So um, yeah, it, it'd be awesome. And in terms of uh, you know the pinnacle, you know I think it is right up there. It's it's got you know the longest history of kind of a world event where all the teams compete. Um, you only get a shot at it every four years. Um, so, you know, even if you have a long career, you might only play in two of these events. Uh, so, um, you know, it's 2015 is still a career highlight for me. So I think tomorrow if we win, I might pip it. Pat, here. Yeah. Uh, Australia has a reputation of winning, you know, know how to work up, win World Cup titles. It's, you guys are five-time champions and going against two-time champions. Do you feel like you are the favourites? I uh, don't know about that. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's going to be an even match. Uh, I think you can make a case for, for either side. Um, yeah, the good thing is I think we've got six or seven guys that won it in 2015. Um, so we know that feeling. Even, even more of the guys that were there in the T20 World Cup, different format, but um, pretty much everyone, well, you know, at least a dozen of the 15 have won a World Cup and, and know what it takes and know that feeling and um, you know, won't be afraid to go out there and uh, be brave and take the game on. Yeah. Thanks all.